بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصدر يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, Allah loves those who are clean and Allah loves those who are pure. We have to purify the heart and we have to clean ourselves externally as well as internally. Remember the Almighty says, Allah loves those who constantly repent and those who cleanse themselves. This is verse number 222 of Surat Al-Baqarah. So my brothers and sisters, if you look at cleanliness, while we must keep our hands clean, while we must wash ourselves, while we must actually clean ourselves in a specific way five times a day to make ourselves ready for the prayer, we must make sure that our clothes are clean, our surrounding is clean, the environment is clean, the house is clean, the bedding is clean, the food we eat is clean. All this is part of the goodness that the Almighty expects from us. Now, the Almighty only tells us to do that which is actually beneficial for us. So it can never be that He's instructed us something and it's not good for us. It has to be beneficial. It will be. Whether we understand it or not, sometimes disease spreads and we don't realize that the Almighty had granted us a gift by teaching us about cleanliness so it did not spread as much amongst us. However, at times, it's just a lesson for us to appreciate what the Almighty has actually revealed. So we become more conscious of the cleanliness factor. That's a gift of Allah. You want comfort in times of crisis? Make sure that you keep yourselves clean. Make sure you clean your heart, like I said. Because what's the point of having such a good-looking outward appearance? and your hands are clean and everything else is smart, your clothes are ironed very well, you're looking very neat with your haircut and whatever else it might be, but the way you speak is so bad, your heart is dirty, filled with disease, filled with hatred, jealousy, deception and so on. If we cleanse ourselves, we will definitely be able to achieve the comfort. Allah says, He loves those who seek forgiveness and He also loves those who are very, very clean. So if you were to seek forgiveness from the Almighty, then you would automatically have to clean your heart because the two go together, hand in hand. You clean your heart, you seek the forgiveness of the Almighty, He forgives you and you have a big heart to forgive others as well. Now, one of the things where people go wrong is in marriage when the marriage is struggling. Remember, marriage is a very big sacrifice. If you are going to sacrifice, you will be happy. If not, it will become a crisis. So if you want to protect yourself from the crisis within marriage, learn to trust one another and don't give reason for your spouse not to trust you. So while we're teaching you to trust one another, we're telling you don't give reason for the other not to trust you. So this is a very balanced statement. We must make sure we don't pry and spy on each other because the Almighty has warned us about that. Similarly, speak good with each other, help each other, reach out to each other. Don't put pressure or don't actually ask one another to do that which is going to be difficult, very difficult, because then it might create a crack in that marriage. But the Almighty says, you know what, as much as it's a sacrifice, we want you to love each other, we want you to have children together and to bring those children up in my obedience, the Almighty says. That's the whole aim. It's not about having children and having more children and you don't even look after them and you're not even bothered. That defeats the whole purpose. 
But if you have children and you look after them and you give them a good upbringing, then you will be from among those who is protected from crisis. Many people have children and the children are the reason that they are upset and in crisis. The children sometimes are the source of their hardship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen to us. So Allah says, however, at times it might end up being very difficult such that you are discussing divorce. Divorce in Islam is not prohibited, but it's not a joke either. It's a last resort when someone really cannot make this marriage work anymore and it's causing problem, hardship, difficulty. It's becoming a strain on the brain. In that particular case, you may want to consider separating. And Allah says, when you separate, it's definitely difficult. There will be other acts of worship you're going to have to engage in that you never engaged in before. For example, if you have children, you will have to allow access or custody to either party. You will have to allow that. Whether you marry again or not, you have no option but to cooperate. If you don't, the Almighty is watching. He knows. So make things easy. Never use your children as a tool or a weapon against one another. Look after them. Spend on them even if they happen to be with the mother. Make sure that the children are given the best upbringing and it's all about the goodness of those children. Learn to respect the mother or the father of your children even if they are no longer your spouse. Learn to respect them for the mere fact that you had children together even if they did bad things. But put all those bad things aside when it comes to the betterment of the children. Yes, there are cases where if a parent was so abusive that they don't qualify anymore for the access or the custody, that is a different issue. But that's not the norm. That's not what happens all the time. We must try and give the children a balanced upbringing in order to avoid ourselves a crisis and in order to grant ourselves the comfort that we so need. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. When you make someone else's life difficult, Allah makes your life difficult. Remember that. It has to happen that way. So my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah speaks about divorce in Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, there is a way of divorcing. You divorce once. Thereafter, you may reconcile. Wow, imagine what type of comfort. It's the only teaching across the globe throughout all religions that if you were to divorce, the Almighty says, well, you can reconcile. Come back. You may. You might have realized something and you want to come back. So Allah says, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا أَن يَتَرَاجَعَ And if he had divorced her, there is no harm if both of them would like to get back to each other together. That's the first divorce. So Allah says, well, if you feel you made a mistake and you shouldn't have divorced, come back, come back together. Look at the comfort Allah's giving you in times of crisis. It was a crisis. You made a mistake. You divorced someone. Allah says, hang on, we have comfort for you. What's the comfort? Get back together. But remember, when you divorce, do it the proper way. Learn how to issue the divorce. May Allah make it easy for us. Some people do the wrong thing, then they scream for help when they cannot be helped because they were foolish in the first place. But Allah says, don't worry, we will help you. You do it the right way, we allow you to get back together. Not once, but twice, two times you can get back together. So if you made a mistake and divorced first time, come back. If you divorced a second time, you had a change of heart, something happened which was positive, you felt perhaps you wanted to get back or you thought you made a mistake. Allah says you can get back a second time. Subhanallah. Look at the power of Allah. Look at the comfort He's given us. Amazing. And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 230. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in a beautiful way. Then Allah says, if you've divorced your spouse, don't become upset when they want to marry someone else. Make it easy for them. Let, them. let them go. Sometimes a person divorces and when they hear that their ex wants to get married, they start putting a spoke in the wheels and a spanner in the works and they contact the new uh, supposed spouse and begin to spread rumor and say hurtful and hateful things. Allah says, do not do that. You want comfort in your life? Let others live comfortably. 
It's okay, you didn't get along, they will get along with someone else. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So he warns us, he says, don't hold them back. Don't hold a woman back in a way that she's neither married to you because you're not fulfilling her rights, nor is she divorced because you haven't issued the divorce so she cannot go to someone else. Either fulfill her rights properly or release her respectfully. That is how you will achieve comfort. Otherwise, you will be in the biggest crisis. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from crises. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that remember the favors of Allah upon you. Remember that Allah has blessed you with so much. So count the favors of Allah. Don't have a chapter opened and you want to interfere negatively in your ex's life. Don't ever do that. That's your ex-spouse or that is a person you didn't get along with. Leave them alone, say a good word about them and that's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Similarly, the parents. The parents are being addressed to say, when a divorced girl wants to marry someone else, don't make it hard for them. We go a step further and say, my beloved parents, when your daughters or your sons would like to marry someone, don't say no without a valid, valid reason. If you don't have a valid reason, and racism is not a valid reason, tribalism is not a valid reason, the fact that this person is darker in complexion is never a valid reason. So remember, allow the marriages and Allah will allow for you to enter paradise. Remember, if they're making a mistake after you've tried to explain to them your opinion and they're still stuck on their view and they don't want to budge it's better sometimes to allow them to make what you think is a mistake and you might be surprised that they will be so happy and even if it does end up being a mistake it's not the end of the world they can actually come back home and still happy and you can tell them my child i love you i told you it wouldn't work but if we were to stagnate and we were to actually never consider what they want perhaps we would be creating a crisis out of a comfortable situation, which is actually the opposite of what we're talking about today. So my brothers and my sisters and my beloved parents, facilitate for your siblings and your children to get married in a good way. Give them good guidance from the beginning. Tell them what marriage is all about. Tell them how to choose a spouse so that the day they do take that step, they will remember your words. The difficulty is we never participate in the lives of those we're supposed to be participating in, and then we complain. May Allah forgive us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salati inna allaha ma'as sabirin. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, when we call out to the Almighty for our needs Usually, we call out for the needs of this world and we at times forget to call out for the needs of the hereafter. Let's remember that the greatest crisis that a man can actually face is that on the Day of Judgment. If we pass that, we've passed everything. If we fail that, we've failed everything. So it's important when we supplicate and when we call out to the Almighty, we actually call out not just for this worldly need, but for the hereafter and for Savior from hellfire. And this is why when the Almighty speaks about those who go on the pilgrimage or for the Hajj, he actually says there are some who supplicate and they're only asking about worldly things. What portion will they have from the hereafter? But he says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ They are from among them those who call out to the Almighty saying, O oh Allah, grant us, or O oh our Lord, grant us goodness in this world as well as goodness in the hereafter and save us from the hellfire or the punishment of hellfire. Allah says, 
those are the ones who will have a portion of what they have earned. And this is something very, very interesting because we tend to forget that the crises of this world are nothing compared to the crisis of the hereafter. Simple reason, that one is everlasting. This one is not going to last long. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding and the ability to be able to call out to him in the correct way. You know, if we take a look at the prophets of Allah, they were loved by Allah more than us. They were chosen by Allah more than us ordinary people. And if you look at their lives, they went through challenge after challenge. They went through so much. We would have called it crisis after crisis. But there was a point when even the messengers called out to Allah to say, when is your help coming? Sometimes in our lives, we find one difficulty followed by another, then a third and a fourth, and it starts raining difficulties and hardship, such that we begin to think, where is the Almighty? And why is He not helping us? Those who know, those who believe would actually know that, you know, the even the messengers of Allah went through a lot of difficulty with their own companions. They faced hardship and they too said, when is the help of Allah going to come? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 214 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Behold, the help of Allah is very near, very near. When you are getting to the point that we would perhaps term the boiling point, when you're getting to the point where you feel you're almost broken, Allah says, well, if you have faith in me, I want you to know my help is very near. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. It's challenging, but we've said in the past we were created in order to be tested. We will be tested one after the other, and we must ensure that we have pleased the Almighty in whatever way we can. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you're spending, spend from that which the Almighty has given you. We've seen in past episodes that one of the ways of achieving comfort in crisis is to spend to share, to reach out to others. So the question is, who should I reach out to first? Obviously, those who are most in need. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ When you are going to spend, make sure that you spend on your parents. You spend on your relatives, you spend on the orphans, you spend on the poor, those in need, and the wayfarer, the one who is stranded. So make sure that you spend on these people. Take care of your elderly parents. Your parents took care of you when you were young. It's about time you took care of them, even with the differences you may have. And it's normal to begin to have differences as you grow older with those who are even older. Perhaps a generation gap, perhaps whatever other reason. But remember, be patient, be calm. Only say respectful words and spend on them. Make sure that they are okay. When they reach the age where they cannot work anymore, they cannot earn anymore, they should not have to worry about life. We should be spending on them. May Allah grant us. Remember when you spend on others, the Almighty has to give you because in order to get it to them, you are the one who's undertaken to give it to them. So he will give it to you first. And this is why he says, then look around you, your family members, your brothers, your sisters, those who are related to you, your uncles and aunts, nephews and nieces, and the circle goes broader. Take care of them. Anyone from among them struggling, reach out to them and look at the comfort Allah will give you when you are in difficulty and hardship. Then you look for those who are orphans and the widows and look after them for the sake of the Almighty. Look after them because they've lost a parent or they've lost their father. They've lost a breadwinner. Look after the poor. Look after the needy, those who are stranded, the strangers who've come to your town, those who are passing by, you don't know them, they don't know you, but all you know is that they are stranded. The Almighty says, look after them, and then you see how the Almighty will bless you. That is amazing. 
This teaches us that when we reach out to others, the Almighty reaches out to us. And we must make sure that we look after our family members, our relatives, our communities, our countrymen, etc., members of the Ummah, before we make the circle larger. But if there is someone in greater need, look after the one who is the most desperate first. These are just lessons that the Almighty has delivered to us and He's asking us to be good and kind in order to achieve that goodness and kindness from the Almighty. He says, whatever good you do, He definitely knows about it. That's verse number 215 of Surah Al-Baqarah. If you look at the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something amazing. You know, sometimes we desperately want something, we think it's good for us, we really feel we would like it, and Allah knows that it is not good for you. So Allah says, sometimes you dislike something and He knows it's better for you. And sometimes you love something and He knows it's not good for you. So He keeps you towards that which is always beneficial. He has your back, basically. So it's amazing how Allah says in verse number 216, Sometimes you don't like something. It's better for you. So sometimes you like something and it's not good for you. Let's take a look at the crises we are facing. We have a situation where the world has changed. Everything has turned upside down. People are struggling. People are complaining. People are being infected and affected. People have lost their jobs. People don't know where they're going to get the next morsel of food from in some cases and so much more. Allah says, you know what? If all of that brought you closer to me, it was better for you. If all of that brought you closer to me, it was better for you. And sometimes we have made you lose a job because we know that if you open your own business, you will make much more money than the salary you were getting. So we made sure you lost that job. We did you a favor, but you cried for a while. The minute you got up and realized the favor of Allah, that's the very minute you began to achieve and receive the comfort. Sometimes you lose in terms of marriage, perhaps a divorce, perhaps you lost your spouse. Do you know that maybe the Almighty wants to give you someone 10 times better? And that's why the Almighty made you go through something you thought was so bad for you. Allah says, no, you don't know, we know. When you leave it to us and you just did your best and continue to do your best, we will make sure that you have actually achieved the comfort in the long run. So my brothers and sisters, learn to surrender to the will of Allah. Have you tried your best? Yes, you did. Then don't worry. The rest is going to come. Have faith. Have conviction. Build that faith and conviction. If Allah wanted you somewhere, there's nowhere else you're going to be. And if Allah did not want you somewhere, you're never ever going to be there. Remember that. So this is conviction and faith in the Almighty. We need to build it we have become weak in faith. And this is why to build that faith, the Almighty makes us helpless at times. So helpless because He just wants you to turn to Him. The minute you turn to Him, you will achieve the comfort that He really wanted you to achieve. What greater comfort that can there be than that which is provided from the Almighty Himself? So Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows. You don't know. People lost their jobs. Like I said, people went through divorce. People have had great loss. Sometimes they, big business deals went sour. Something you were really looking forward to went wrong. You had planned and you had actually thought that you were going to make a lot of money and you didn't. You know, sometimes your health fails you. You go through a scare such that you almost died. And Allah says, no, you know what? It was better for you. You came to us. You became a better person. Sometimes we have an attitude that actually stinks. Sometimes we have pride and arrogance, haughtiness. To chop that and cut that, the Almighty does things to us. But if we don't chop and cut, even after the Almighty has tested us and given us the opportunities, then we have none other to blame than ourselves. Even the Almighty will say, I tried to give you the sign, but you didn't want it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, develop your character, your conduct, 
Humble yourself. Be a better person. Watch how you speak to others, especially those who work with you and for you, those with whom you're earning. Make sure you look after them. These are good people. Make sure you've cared for them. Imagine your staff at your business or your colleagues or whoever else is there. They are struggling and you're busy enjoying your life. You will never earn goodness through that. Look after everyone. Allah will look after you. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. My beloved brothers and sisters. Allah Almighty addresses humankind at large, instructing them to eat. Imagine in the Quran, there is a verse where Allah says, eat. But together with that, he's telling us what type of food we should eat in order for us to save ourselves from harm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الناس كلوا مما في الأرض حلالا طيبا. O people, eat from that which is on earth. For as long as it is halal and tayyib, which means pure and clean. So we must make sure that the food we eat is pure and clean because if it is not pure and clean, according to the Quran, the energy that is derived from that food which is impure and unclean would only be used in that which is impure and immoral. So many times we get so encouraged to do something good because what we've eaten is pure and good. So they say when you eat healthy, you think healthy. When you think healthy, you do that which is healthy and good and beneficial. So the same would apply where if a person is only encouraged and empowered towards that which is immoral and very bad, perhaps there may be something wrong with exactly what they're eating. So to make sure that it is pure and good would actually go a long way in ensuring your comfort during times of crisis. It's amazing. Many of us think that halal has only to do with the manner in which an animal is slaughtered. But that's wrong. It has a lot to do with your earnings as well. Have you earned that which is free from deception, free from that which is harmful and free from that which is illegal, such as stealing and so on? So to do with the income, where are you working? What exactly are you doing? May Allah make it such that we become more conscious of this and we actually earn that which is pure to begin with. Thereafter, the way you treated the animals is extremely important. Today in the commercial world, many people abuse the animals or maltreat them. Allah says, don't do that. Your food must be tayyib, not only halal, but make sure that even the animals that you are consuming have been treated in the most befitting way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us benefit. So this verse from Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ Immediately after telling us to eat that which is pure and clean, he says, and don't follow the footsteps of the devil. If you are to follow the footsteps of shaitan, you will definitely be at a loss. Similarly, if you were to eat that which is impure and unclean, you would be following the footsteps of the devil. Allah says, He is an outright enemy of yours. The devil, what does he do? He instructs you to engage in evil and that which is immoral. That's what the devil does. So people who engage in immorality, people who are not bothered about their values, 
many times it's got to do with them following the footsteps of the devil because what they're consuming is that which is unclean or impure. So from this what we learn is if we were to derive comfort in times of crisis, it would be also through ensuring that what we're consuming is healthy. Eat healthy, eat pure, eat clean and see how the blessings of the Almighty descend upon you. My brothers and sisters, we are taught that whenever you're about to put something in your mouth, take the name of the Almighty. Start off Bismillah in the name of Allah. When you do that, whatever you've put in your mouth will be blessed. The plate of food in front of you, try to finish your food. Don't be wasteful. If you are wasteful, how do you expect comfort in times of crisis? That food which we had taken into our plates and wasted it could have been a meal for those who don't have food at all. So let's consider this and think about it. Then I move on to the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this beautiful month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how some people find it very difficult for some reason. Remember my brothers and sisters, fasting is a pillar of Islam. We have five pillars. Praying is also a pillar of Islam. We must pray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us if you are unable to pray because of sickness or if you are traveling, then we can change for you a few things to make it easy for you. Because you and I know that traveling is very, very difficult at times. So Allah says, well, if it's more than a certain amount of, uh, you know, meterage, more than a certain distance or if it is difficult, then your prayer, you may do it in a slightly different way. You may shorten it, etc. So Allah is making it easy for us. Similarly, if you're unwell and you cannot stand in prayer, he says to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that you can sit and pray, no problem. My aim is not to make things difficult for you, but you fulfill your duty. If you cannot sit and pray, you may lie down and pray. Amazing, but you always do that which you are able to do in the best possible way that you can do. These verses of fasting show us that if you are unwell or you are on a journey, you have an option of not fasting and making it up later on when you are okay or when you are no longer on a journey. Imagine the blessing of the Almighty. He is giving us comfort in times of crisis. What is the crisis? The crisis is I can't fast if I'm not well and I'm sickly or perhaps I am diagnosed with this virus and I'm concerned about my immune system because I have an underlying condition. Allah says the aim was never to make it difficult on you. Listen to what Allah says after he says you must fast. He says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah says whoever is unwell, sickly, incapable or on a journey can make the fast up later on after the month of Ramadan because Allah says He wants ease for you he does not want to make things difficult for you. He knows your condition. Don't stress. So this is why people who have some excuse and they know they cannot manage, Allah says, no problem. You can make it up later on at another time. What about those who really cannot because of their age or because they have a terminal illness and may never be able to make it up? Well, in that case, he tells us that you can actually give a charity a certain type of a charity known as a fidya on, for every fast that you have missed and the Almighty will accept it from you. Then another way of benefiting yourself in times of crisis, immediately after speaking about the fast and how people do have excuses uh, and they may be able to fast later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my worshippers ask you about me, I am very near, very close. Allah is closer to us than our own jugular veins. That's what the Quran says. And you know what? He says, أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ 
I respond to everyone who calls out to me every time they call out to me. So keep calling out to Allah and believe in Him in order for you to be rightly guided. Allah says, ask me, keep asking me. He loves it when you repeat it. So if I were to ask anyone a favor and I were to repeat it again and again, they would probably get irritated because they're human beings. But in the case of Allah, when you are to ask for it again and again, you're actually engaged in an act of worship. For as long as you're asking Him alone, subhanAllah, He is the one we worship, the maker, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the one in control of what I want. So when you're asking him, you're acknowledging that I know you have this. You are the one, you are the owner. So I'm asking you and I keep asking you. I keep asking you, subhanAllah. That is a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, if you would like to achieve goodness and if you would like to be from among those who are rightly guided, you ask me and I will give you. My brothers and sisters, don't we see how by calling out to the Almighty already, there is so much of comfort in the hearts. Like I always say, when we call out to the Almighty, He hears us. Definitely He has already heard us. Sometimes because He knows that it's not good for us, He doesn't give it to us. He gives us something in place of that or He averts some calamity that was supposed to come in our direction simply because we called out to Him and Him alone. When you ask Allah for goodness all the time, He knows sometimes exactly what you want might not be good for you. So He gives you some other goodness or He takes away some harm from your path. This is part of the benefit of calling out to Allah constantly. The crisis that you may never know was supposed to be in your path was diverted by virtue of you calling out to the Almighty, worshipping Him alone and asking Him constantly. So these are the favors of the Almighty upon us. Sometimes what the Almighty does is as a result of the fact that we kept calling out to Him, He keeps for us the goodness in the hereafter. Sometimes He delays it to a time that He knows is a better time or is the right time. You're asking for something right now and the Almighty says, No, I know I love you more than you love yourself. I know that it's not good for you right now for whatever reason. I'm going to give it to you when the time is right. That's the Almighty. That's His favor upon us. My brothers and sisters, trust your Lord. Trust Him. He knows what He is doing. He will give you. He will grant you the comfort you need. And He will bless you in every single way in this world as well as the next. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brothers and sisters بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Deriving comfort in times of crisis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and this is by far one of the most powerful verses in this subject. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'inu bil sabri wa salati inna allaha ma'a sabirin. O you who believe, seek assistance through patience and prayer, for indeed Allah is with those who bear patience. This verse is amazing because it shows us how we can achieve comfort in times of crisis. To begin with, Allah is addressing the believers. So He is saying, O oh, you who believe. Well, if I am a believer, I need to listen attentively because I am being addressed. Allah says, seek assistance. You want help? Well, you can be helped by the following. Do you really want comfort in times of crisis? Well, if you do, this is what you should do. Basically, that's what Allah is telling you. Ista'inu, seek assistance. Through what? 
through patience. You must be patient upon the tests that Allah has placed in your path. You must bear a beautiful patience. Beautiful patience means I'm calm, I'm relaxed, I have hope. I believe in Allah. I know goodness will come. I know that after the darkest hour, there is always daybreak. The one who brought about that daybreak will actually bring about the daybreak in my crisis. And as much as I'm convinced that the sun is going to rise, I'm also convinced that my problem is going to end. So that is called a beautiful patience. It is calm, it is filled with contentment, with peace, with love, with lots of helping of others. But Allah warns us from that type of patience that is not really patience because it is not beautiful, it is the opposite. People become abusive, they become angry, selfish, hurtful, they start spreading panic amongst others. All that is unacceptable. Allah says, Istainu bis sabr. Seek help and assistance through a beautiful patience. You need to know Allah is there. Allah created you in the first place. He will take care of you. Don't worry. He will indeed take care of you. And He will make sure that you live your exact prescribed time on earth. It's not going to change by a fraction of a second, neither this way nor that way. So Allah is telling the believers, seek assistance through patience. And then he says, and prayer. Prayer, pray a lot, call out to Allah. Your five daily prayers, do them enthusiastically. Be excited about praying. Don't just get it over and done with, but be excited. Wash yourself thoroughly, properly for the sake of Allah. Be clean, be smart. Keep yourselves clean. When the Almighty tells you to wash yourself in ablution, you need to know there is a reason He is saying wash your hands five times a day. There is a reason He is saying keep yourself clean and smart. If you were to go to the bathroom, make sure that you've cleansed yourself. All this is in order to bring about a comfort in times of crisis. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ was faced with a crisis of some nature, the first thing he did, he rushed to prayer. Who are we? We are the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him. We should also be rushing to prayer. Whenever there is a crisis, for him it was not a real crisis. He knew he was the messenger of Allah. For us, we face crises, but when we rush to prayer, we will be comforted by Allah. Put your head on the ground and call out to your maker. The closest you could ever be to your maker is when you are in prostration. The closest that a slave could be to his maker is when his head is on the ground for his maker, crying to his maker, Oh my maker, help me. I need your help. Allah will respond. Allah says, you will be comforted. Seek help through patience, and prayer, for indeed Allah is with those who bear patience. One might ask, well, in this verse, which is verse number 153 of Surah Al-Baqarah, why does Allah speak about patience before prayer? Surely prayer is more important than patience. A simple response, you require patience in order to pray. You need to actually practice that patience you need to be strong enough to get up and pray. You need to forsake your bedding in order to pray. You need to get up at night in order to cry to Allah. The most blessed moment is actually a portion of the night known as the last third, just before the early morning prayer. It is called the time of the Hajjud. Get up at that time when the Almighty is calling out saying, who is there, who is asking me, I can give them. Call out to him at the time. Doesn't that require a lot of patience? Doesn't that require restraint? We need to protect ourselves. We need to actually fight our sleep. Get up for the sake of Allah. So now do you see why patience is mentioned before prayer? Although prayer is a pillar of Islam, but in order to fulfill it, you're going to need patience. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, seek assistance through patience and prayer for indeed Allah is with those who are patient his help is with them he is with them his assistance is with them and solutions are with them and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says immediately after that 
وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We will indeed test every one of you. The Arabic language, the word used is emphasized very, very strongly. We will definitely test every one of you. Haven't we said Allah has created us to test us from the beginning of our lives right to the end of our lives, one after the other, test after test, just like the others. We will also be tested. Allah says we will test you. With what? Allah says, hang on, we tell you what we will test you with. Listen to how amazing the verse is, right? So this is verse number 155 of Surah Al-Baqarah. بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ With a little bit of fear, anxiety. You'll suffer with some anxiety, some fear. Why a little bit of fear? Because if you're a believer, the fear will never overtake you. Your faith actually overtakes the fear. So your patience will overtake the fear. Your prayer will overtake the fear. So Allah says, a little bit of fear. Remember, he's addressing the believers here, or you who believe. So we will test you with a little bit of fear, anxiety, uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Will I? Will I not be affected, infected? Am I going to lose my job? Am I not? Allah says, don't worry. Bear patience. Do your best. Lay, the, lay your trust in Allah. The rest of it, Allah will take care of. So a little bit of fear. Then he says, well, ju'i, some hunger. You might not know where the next meal is going to come from. You may not have the means to reach where the food is. You might have lost a job. You don't know where you're going to pay for the meal from. You might have a sickness and you won't be able to eat certain things. A disease might spread. Anything may happen. Allah says, you know what? Fear. And then hunger. And then loss of wealth. You may lose your property in a flood or in a tsunami, in an earthquake. May Allah never do that to us. In a war zone, to robbers, whatever it may be, may Allah protect us. Allah says it will happen. It's part of the tests we will send in your direction. We have to test. You made a profit, you will now make a loss. It's a crisis, isn't it? Well, Allah tells you to achieve comfort through patience and prayer. Bear patience. This is your test. Hasn't Allah given you so much? Well, now he's testing you. You made a profit for 10 years. Now your factory might burn down. Take it in your stride. Bear patience. Turn to Allah. Pray. Don't ever give up. Keep going. Allah will give you even more. So he says, you may lose thereafter some of your wealth. You will also lose life, your loved ones. People may die around you. Ultimately, you have to go anyway. Remember to bear patience. Bear a beautiful patience. You know, you will be gathered with them again today, one day. When a child goes out to play, the parents send the child, go and play. In the evening, we say, come back. It's now evening, come indoors. The child might cry because they were enjoying the game, but you know it is safer and better for them to be indoors. So you make it a point, you will come indoors and you go and bring them indoors. What happens to us as human beings? Allah sends us onto the earth. We started playing our games and we got too used to it. When Allah says, come back, it's now time to come back. We begin to cry. I don't want to go. So Allah says, you will come back. It's better for you here and it is safer. So I will go back to Allah when he's going to call me. And subhanAllah, have you ever thought of it that way? It will bring about a lot of comfort when you put things into perspective and understand what Allah is doing. Allah sent us onto the earth for a short span of time. Okay, not to play a game, but Allah says the worldly life is, a, is an amusement and a pastime. Make sure you pray and develop your relationship with Allah while you're there. And then when you come back to Allah, you will find a lot of goodness. And when Allah calls you back, don't be upset, don't be angry. Because Allah knows it's better for you. You will lose your loved ones. You will lose life. Ultimately, you have to go. And I promise you, you may even lose your produce. Allah says, وَالثَّمَرَاتِ But then Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ sabirin. Give good news to those who bear patience. And who are those who bear patience? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا Those whom when calamity or crisis strikes, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We belong to Allah in the first place and we are going to all return to Allah. 
So you think of where you came from, where you are right now, where you are heading, and that brings about a lot of comfort. Many of us cling to dear life, although we know we have to leave it. So just embrace. Thank Allah. Do your best while you're alive. Leave behind a very good legacy. Leave behind something good. Do good for your own self and investment for the future. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deep understanding. May we be from among those who can bear good patience and those who say, indeed, we belong to Allah and unto Him is our ultimate return. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين